What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. I'm in the market. This is the Transport Fever 2 playthrough, episode 2. If you're new to the channel, feel free to go back and check out episode 1. I would love it if you would subscribe, leave a like, leave a comment, let me know how you think I'm doing. And uh, so just getting into episode 2 now, I know what you're probably thinking. This is not the PLM that we bought last time in episode 1. These are not the second tier cargo uh, shipping containers for fuel. I went back when I launched this game up today and I replaced the vehicle, uh, the train and the tanker cars with the, uh, with the G3, like we had initially said, and with the 1850 tanker cars the the price mainly the running price of the plm and these especially these uh 1900 tanker cars i mean seventy thousand compared to twenty four thousand. it just wasn't making enough money to get this loan paid down in a timely manner so i just went ahead and, and switched it i i also did a quick edit to the line so before we had both stations waiting 90 seconds to load for full. I changed it so that they just load for full at the oil at Northam. And then when they get down to the fuel, they just pick up what's ever here. And that seems to be working. He's got almost a full load on his way back. And you can see that this train now is making good money, good money. So we should be able to pay down the 12 and a half million that we've still got pretty pretty rapidly so some goals for today i also went ahead and added a few more vehicles to this uh crude line running uh north south right here just so that we can try and keep a decent store of crude in here um it's gonna struggle early on until we get some better vehicles on the road i don't want to just absolutely flood this because i want it to be fairly regular going through the going through the stop at the crude and then going through the stop down here at the refinery. But I think this is working well. I think it should allow us to pay down our loan in fairly good order. The CONMAT and the passenger lines are running really well. I am going to make an edit to this food line. If we go into our lines, like we said before, this food line has now been established for a while and it's still losing us money. And I think the reason is, is that it's just, the vehicles are just traveling too far for a delivery that's actually not that far of a straight line distance. So again, you get paid based on moving goods straight line distance. So from the food processing to the city and having them go on this big end around loop to get into the city is just meaning that they're incurring too much expense on this route and not getting paid enough. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna build a bridge right across here and just connect them into the city. I'll probably connect them onto this road because I imagine at some point we'll upgrade this to a higher capacity road. Um, and then that should give them easy access to drop it off. So let's just go ahead and do that. I'm just gonna use the, the standard dirt road. I'm gonna bring this across. I would think about raising this, but th there's nothing further on this map, so I'm not, you know, I mean, I could raise it up and save the shipping lane, but I don't think that that's necessary in this instance. So I'm just gonna, gonna go ahead and uh, connect this up just so that they have, and the line, yep, it shifted right away because it knew that this was just a better route. And I think I'm just gonna have them come down this instead of this. So I'll go ahead and delete that, Let's see if it does it. Yeah, it does it automatically. I think that that is going to fix our problem. I think that this is gonna start making, making money. Not making great money, uh, but making money for sure. And then back here, back at the fuel line, if you'll see, our train is now delivering with such regularity that we are overstocked on fuel at this Northam Depot. This when you see this uh, this indicator, it essentially means that we're losing goods, that too many goods are arriving at the station that they can't all be stored. 
So I'm going to go on to this fuel line and I'm just going to double the number of vehicles that we have delivering fuel into Northam. And you can see Northam now getting some fuel. Uh, we just added more vehicles, so that's definitely going to increase. And I think you'll start to see Northam start to grow. Um, we could start delivering up to Chatham because you can see that we're starting to get a pretty decent amount of fuel. I think I'll probably wait until this train is no longer able to clear this station on its own uh, before we bring in a second city. Although, honestly, I'll probably just bring it in now because, so if you go into a a an industry building and you go to consumers up here it'll show you who it's trying to deliver to so right now the only consumer for fuel is northam even though we have all these other cities and the reason for that is that northam is the only one that's connected with a delivery route so if we were to connect chatham also with a delivery route you'll see that they will start to supply to chatham as well as northam which will increase the shipment demand and then we'll need to increase the amount of oil that it's getting from this refinery, probably by adding an, a whole nother train. And so on down the line, it will build up this demand for fuel. So I'm going to go ahead and add in the depot. We just need one platform. I'll try and line it up with this intersection just to keep it nice and clean. I generally find that six, six platforms is a pretty good number. Yeah. And then that makes it nice and clean. And then we'll add, I'm probably, I'm gonna go ahead and delete this road. There's no reason to have it cross over the train to then cross back over the train. It's just not necessary. So I'll just bring this right in here. And then it can go ahead and deliver up into up into Chatham. So you can see fuel right here. I'll probably add it right here. So they'll come up. We'll take a left. They'll loop back around and then exit. So if we add a new line from Chatham fuel refinery up into here, it's not going to do what I want it to do. So. I'll just force it to do that and I'll even make it a little bit nicer so it can, yeah, and it didn't even need that. It didn't even need that waypoint. And now we can go ahead and add a depot. Now with the depots, I like to add them in the city. Uh, some people like to add them kind of out in the middle of nowhere. Uh, I think it, it's nice to have it in the city so that when we set up bus routes or tramp or not necessarily tram routes because that's a different depot, but it just allows the vehicles to kind of spawn from the city and go whichever way they need to go. And if you place it in an industrial area, they they don't they won't mind. So I'll go ahead and I'll spin this around and we'll just sneak it right in here. And then we'll go ahead and buy maybe four of these cargo vehicles to start. I'm gonna go ahead and just edit this line real quick. So it's gonna be a truck. It's gonna be Chatham Fuel. I'm gonna make this a nice orange. It's gonna load a full load at the refinery before it steps off. And then we're gonna go ahead and put these on that line. And now if we go into consumers, you'll start to see right here it's starting to supply to Chatham. And you should start to see some fuel. It's got enough oil. You should start to see some fuel get placed onto that depot. So we'll leave that for now. The other thing that we're gonna to need to do is we're gonna to need to add another train. So the way that I'm gonna do this is I'm going to wait for this train to get all the way down to the refinery, fuel refinery and then add another train onto the line so that they're at opposite ends and they should never interfere with one another.
And I don't even know if the number of vehicles that we currently have on this Northam fuel line are enough, because you can see that they've, they're they already at capacity, and when this train gets back with more fuel, it's just going to push it right over the edge. Uh, so we're going to we're gonna go ahead and add another couple vehicles, maybe two more, onto this line, just to try and clear some of that fuel. So we'll let that go, and then let's go back up here and see how this line is doing. So the food line is finally making us money. So that's exactly what it was. It was just taking too long to get those goods back and forth from the fuel processing into the city. So I really want to go ahead and set up a couple more passenger routes. By the end of the video, I actually want to have a passenger rail line going up here to Bradley Stoke, and then probably a bus route going between Northam and this station here. I'm going to go ahead and pay down some of that loan, just leaving us with a little bit of cash. So let's look for another few cities that are close together that could do with a bus route. That's a pretty good option. This is a really good option. Uh, Hayward's Heath to Hornsey. And there's already a bus stop here. So we could potentially reuse that bus stop. They could come down and then loop out of the city. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and put a, a bus route in here at Hornsey. So if we come in here, we're going to grab this bus stop and we're going to go up here makes a nice loop there and it makes a nice loop here I like that color passenger lines I don't edit these so that's fine so this is gonna be a bus and it's gonna be Hornsey to what did I say this was Hayward Haywards Haywards Heath so we'll just do Haywards bus and now we need to get some vehicles on there I'll go ahead and build a depot in this industrial area, which also has some houses around it, but that's okay. So I'll put that depot in right there. And now let's buy some buses. Let's buy some buses, maybe six, and we'll put them on that Hornsey bus route. And you can see they'll go off, and we should start to get some passengers who want to go up to Hayward Heath. And if we go into our line here, and we go to our market to Hornsey, bus route. You can see that they are fully loaded. 48 out of 48 with passengers remaining. So I might add maybe two more buses onto that line just to give it a bit more capacity. And you can already see people are wanted to go from Hayward Teeth down to Hornsey. We could connect Market Bosworth with what is this? Droitwich? Droitwich Spa? We could also connect Market Bosworth with Bodman. That wouldn't be a bad idea. And if we're going to start connecting all of these different places, at some point it'll be a good idea to think about upgrading some of these roads, creating an inner city bus route at Market Bosworth, and then making a bus depot or a, a bus transfer station maybe up here and creating a ring road around. So if we were to go in and try and upgrade some of these roads. This is going to be a main road coming down, and you can just see 900,000 just to replace this one block. We just can't afford it right now. And truthfully, the city doesn't need it right now. There's not enough traffic going on in the city to warrant a an upgrade of these roads right now. But that being said, I think I'll go ahead and probably set up, I'll put a second bus stop on the other side of the street, 
just so that they're not all crowding together. And then I'm going to go ahead and put bus stops in both of these towns. So this one will come up and then loop back around. I like that. And then this one will come down and there really isn't a great place for it to loop. So I'll probably have to add a block. And again, this really is not necessary, but I just think that it will make transportation a bit smoother in the town by allowing it to loop and not just turn around in the middle of the street. So if we add a new stop, and this one's going to come on this this right hand one. And let's see, it's going to come up and then go it'll cross over itself. That's not the end of the world, honestly. It'll come down here, so how's this going to do it? Yeah, it's going to take a left and loop back around. That's fine. But then down here, I do want it to make a loop, so I'm going to have it loop around here. So I need a waypoint going down like this. And after Grove, it's going to go down here and loop around. That's fine, actually. I don't mind that at all. Um, yeah, that's a fine loop. And this is going to be a bus from Market Bosworth down to Bodeman bus. Leave all that fine. I don't mind that orange color. So I'll go ahead and I'll add maybe six buses onto that route. I believe it was that orange. We'll add them on. We need a new line. It's going to go from station one all the way up here. And if it's going to do that, I might put the bus stop on the other side of the road. So if we go in here and we just delete that bus station and put it on the other side of the road, we'll see that's just a cleaner loop. It doesn't have to cross over traffic. Uh, it will there, but it, that's fine. And that yellow is fine. How's it going to do here? It's going to come down and loop through. And we'll go ahead and add I guess I can't afford to add some vehicles on there right now. I'll go ahead and I'll add I'll add two on there for now. Three. I can add three. And this is going to be a bus route from Market Bosworth up to Droitwich. And now with those bus routes established, we should start to see quite a bit of traffic at this bus station here in the center. And you can see, this is why I put them on both sides. I didn't want the buses to have to queue all on the same side of the road. So by splitting it up, it allows just a, a bit easier of traffic flow for all these buses. This is fine, it's only two lines. And man, we've got a lot of traffic at this bus station, but that's great. I mean, buses, pa passenger routes, easy bus routes are great ways to get some cities to grow early on in the game. And you should start to see they're losing us money, but as they establish themselves, they'll start to be more like, more like this market to Hornsey route that we've had established now for a while. So as these get going, you'll start to see that they start making a pretty decent amount of money. 
I might think about throwing a few more vehicles onto this grain route, just because you can see that this is pretty starved for grain. It's not quite getting enough, and as a result, Wadhurst is getting a decent amount of food, but not quite what they need. So I'll probably go ahead and throw another few vehicles onto this route, maybe four. Just so that, just so that they get a bit more grain down to the, the food processing. And we could even potentially have these grain vehicles pick up some food and bring it back to Yeovil, but I don't think we're getting enough grain down there to be able to supply two cities quite yet. One other thing that we talked about in the last episode that I actually think I'm going to do today is set up this fuel with the ship and then probably a train line down here and then deliver some fuel into Heathfield. I just think that that would be a fun thing to set up. The only thing about it is I would probably want to landscape out a little bit just to get this port a little bit closer to this uh, fuel refinery. Or, sorry, this uh, extraction, this oil well. And landscaping is expensive. So I'm probably going to wait a little bit until we get a bit more money in the bank to do that. And a lot of that is just personal preference. Um, I think it looks a lot cleaner to have a harbor not just on the... Where, where is it? I lost it. Here it is. I think it's a lot cleaner to have a harbor kind of landscaped into the waterway than just to have it on the riverside. I mean, there's nothing wrong with it. This isn't like an ocean. We don't need to worry about having like a major, a major, you know, uh, water break, you know, like a jetty um, that you would need in a big open water harbor. But again, personal preference, I just think it looks nicer. We can certainly build it now and then replace it later. There's there's nothing wrong with that. Um, but I think our next priority is going to be to get another train on this line. Just so that we can get a bit more, um, a bit more oil coming down to this refinery. But another thing that we could probably look at is adding a few more vehicles onto this line. We're just not getting enough oil into this, um, into this fuel refinery, this oil refinery. Um, but again, these vehicles are so limited. If you look, they only carry five. Um, and you can see actually, I have time paused so this is this is something that i like to do early in the game is leave time paused but have the the in-game speed kicking along at four times and the reason for that is it allows me to bank a little bit of money and pay down my my loan without having time just blast by and unlock all these vehicles that i can't afford to implement right away so once we get this loan paid down, maybe to about five million, I'll probably take this back up to quarter or half speed and let the game run. Just so that we can start getting, you know, some more higher capacity trucks, some higher capacity uh, trains. I mean, we've already got higher capacity trains, we just can't afford them. Higher capacity buses, because you can see that the buses that we have on these lines are just not able to cope with the number of passengers. We're, we're not at the point we're getting passengers that are leaving the station, like we are with some of our fuel, but it'll still be nice to have some faster buses increase the line frequency. Like if we go into here, the line frequency is 127 seconds for the Hornsey Hayward and 96 seconds. That's a lot better for the market to Hornsey. Frequency is huge for passenger routes. It's very important to have frequent service on these routes. And I might go ahead and just add two more buses onto the Hornsey to Hayward route. Just to even it out a little bit, we've got a lot of buses that are up there. I 
Not sure where those buses went that I just bought. Do I have a depot up here? I do not. Oh, they came from... They came from this depot. That is odd. But that's fine. Not the end of the world. And then onto this route. Still only... Our, our demand for this route is, is moderate right now. Which is fine. We do need to get... This reminds me more vehicles on here. So I will double this number of vehicles to get a few more buses onto this route because you can see that we're getting a pretty decent amount of demand now. And these buses, if we go in here, they only carry eight, which is not a tremendous amount. And again, we want to get that line frequency a bit lower. 136 seconds, not terrible. Um, but not ideal either. So we're getting some passenger routes established. You can see now every route is making us money. The Chatham fuel route is the one that's costing us the most. So if we go, if we go over to this Chatham fuel route. I mean, it's got fuel that it can ship. Again, we could probably cut this distance off a little bit so that it's just not taking quite as much time. So you can see we disconnected that, it's mad. But if we just bring this in like this, that'll cut a bit of time off, should save us some money on the trip. So if we go in here, we need to figure out how much it's going to cost to replace this train or to duplicate this train. So if we take a look at the train, it's got a capacity of 60. So if we get another G3, and we take this up to 60, it's going to cost us 2.4 million. So I'm going to try my hardest to not spend money for the next couple minutes while we just wait to get that high enough so we can get another train on that route. And as I say that, I might add some more vehicles to this line. I also might let time tick on now because I would love to unlock the Benz trucks. When we get the Benz trucks, that's a huge, huge upgrade from the vehicles that we have on the line now. Their capacity is higher, their speed is higher. They're just much better at handling freight traffic than these you know, than these little, uh, whatever these are, these little steam, the DMG gasinets, can stats, gasinet, not even close. They're just a lot better at handling um, freight traffic, the Benz trucks. I might add a, a bus route between Wadhurst and Yeovil. I could also link Wadhurst and Hayward's Heath. That way, if you think about your, you're a person living in Bodwin, right and you want to get up to Wadhurst all the way up here right now you you can take a bus to Hayward's Heath and then what are you gonna do you're gonna walk you, you didn't bring a car with you if you took the bus or you're gonna drive all the way from Bodmin up to Wadhurst so I might put in a passenger route right in here I'm also breaking my rule of trying to let time tick on to the point where I can afford another train but the thing about getting another train is I just don't see enough fuel or enough oil accumulating on the station to warrant a second train. The regularity would be nice. And we might make a little bit. And there we go. The Benz trucks come in. So we are immediately going to swap these this oil route out with Benz trucks. Seven capacity compared to five. 25 miles an hour compared to 16. This is huge. This is absolutely huge. This is going to help supply this immeasurably. This is gonna be, this is, this is really big for the line because getting that higher capacity and getting that higher speed is just gonna mean that we're gonna get more crude oil delivered here 
which will result in more crude oil, more refined oil on this platform for this crane. And you can see we are just about getting to the point now where there's an excess of oil. So this has a capacity of 60, this train. And we now have 65 oil on the platform when it arrives, so it didn't take at all. So that to me means that we are just about ready for another train. Probably just in, in a little bit, we will get another train on that line. And then once you get multiple high capacity routes established, particularly rail in the early game, that is a huge, huge moneymaker. Another line that we probably want to look at replacing vehicles on is this grain line. So to replace all of these with Ben's trucks, you can see it's going to be 1.6 million. We just can't afford that right now. But once we can get these replaced, we're going to be supplying more grain to this processing plant, which will just improve the functionality of both of these routes as a whole. You can see that these trucks are just about clearing all the food. You know, there's going to be, what, six, six food here when this truck comes in with a capacity of five. So it's just about going to clear the whole thing. But once we can get more grain going into here, then we'll start to have a bit of an excess of food. And then we can really start ramping up the supply into these cities and growing some of these cities. So now you can start to see, yeah, we have 80 oil here and this train is not even close to being back. So to me, this means it's time for a second train. And once we get a second train on here, that's gonna increase the regularity of the on the line or the frequency on the line, and it's going to allow us, and you can see this is just producing so much more. It's still starved of, of crude. It's not, it doesn't have a surplus of crude, so it's not producing constantly. But just by replacing these with Ben's trucks, we have increased the amount of crude oil that we are bringing into this refinery, which in turn is just making it that much more productive. And if we go into the lines here and we find our crude delivery line, it's now our second most profitable line, right behind the train. And that's not surprising. That's not surprising at all. Another line, this con mat is not getting enough stone. And again, that's just a function of these vehicles not being fast enough or have the high or having a high enough capacity to move this stone to match with the production rate of this construction materials plan. So this line is another line that's a candidate for Ben's trucks. I would say priorities for Ben's trucks are definitely the grain and definitely the construction materials line. I'll probably do the, the grain line first. Um, and we can go ahead and we can go ahead and do that here just in a minute. And I've completely blown my my idea of waiting to get another train. So we're we're so close to another train. What did I say it was? Like 2.6 million? this train's coming back with a good amount of fuel. I would imagine when that train gets back, we'll probably be right there for another, for another train. And you can see we got 10 million in debt. Not terrible. We can pay that off, especially once we get a second train, we will have a lot of, a lot of capacity necessary to move oil and fuel back and forth and we will start making a pretty good amount of money so for future passenger rail lines i'll probably configure this station to be both a passenger and a um 
and a cargo rail station. I'll show you how to do that when we when we get to it. But I'm imagining I'll probably run a line parallel with this one using the same tunnel, bypass this station, and add a station in here at Bradley Stoke, and then probably branch it here, going north, east and west, to, to Bodeman and Ulverston. And then I'll probably also branch that same line to go to Northam, and then carry on all the way to Stourbridge and then probably branch up to Tetford. That's going to be a really good run. We're going to get some great speeds there, and we're going to probably move a pretty good amount of passengers. Northam, still not getting a ton of the fuel that it needs. We could probably go ahead and replace some Benz trucks, but we are right there. We are so close for another train. How much did we say it was going to be for another train? G3, and then 60 capacity of these, we can, we can do it. So we're gonna. And it's going to be the Northam to Chatham oil, which I believe was this gray. Let's see if I did that right. Nope. It's this gray. And I just realized that this should be oil and fuel, because it is bringing fuel back. And you can see our, our trains are now on opposite ends, so they should never interfere with one another. We've also got enough money now where we could switch these out for Ben's trucks on this fuel line. So now this whole operation is Ben's trucks and two trains. And you can see we are starting to get a ton of oil stacking up on this platform. A ton. 200 which our, our trains only have a capacity of 60, so that they're, they're even not gonna be able to clear this. We're gonna have to start adding cargo or more tank cars onto these rail lines to be able to get them to cope with the amount of oil and fuel that we're moving. Ben's trucks up here on the grain line is probably the next goal. Another passenger line from Wadhurst to Hayward's Heath would probably be another good thing to add in. And I'm probably going to do that first, just because the, the Benz truck swap out is going to be an expensive swap. So I'll probably put this here. They'll come in. They'll take a right. They'll come down this side street. Drop off passengers. It has a really good catchment area within the city. And then when they come back, is this station going to work? Yeah, they'll probably take a, take a turn here and come up. So we'll go from Mill Lane up here. And yeah, so that's doing exactly what I wanted it to do. This one, I'd rather it turn here, just because I imagine, I guess it doesn't really matter. I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna do it so that there's, there's less congestion on this side street. So after here, we're gonna go up here. And this is going to be a bus route. It's going to be Haywards up to Wadhurst bus. And we have a depot up here that's not great, so I'll probably add one right in here. This will also be nice. Whenever a depot is on both sides of one of your lot when it's in between the endpoints of a line and you spawn passenger vehicles, it's actually going to split them to both stations, which will even out the line a little bit. This one's not going to be perfectly even because it's far closer to this stop than it is to the other, but it will just help a little bit. So if we go in here and we get some buses, maybe six of them, and we give them this nice green color, You'll see when I spawn these, some will go to Haywards and some will go up to Wadhurst. So it's just already starting to split that line and even out the regularity of the line a little bit. And if we come up here, we should start to see some passengers want to go from Wadhurst down to Haywards Heath because not only are they looking at 
going from Wadhurst to Hayward's Heath. They're looking at going from Wadhurst to any of the cities that are in this bus network. And the same thing. Somebody in Bodeman can catch the bus to Market Bosworth, but that might not be where they want to go. They might be going to Droitwich, Hornsey, all the way up Hayward's Heath to Wadhurst. Getting some bus routes set up early on is a really good way to get these towns to grow. Passengers are great. Bradley Stokes to North, that's a great place for a bus, especially because if you remember from our plans for the rail lines, we're not gonna have a rail that's going from Northam to Bradley Stoke. We're gonna have a rail going from Chatham up to Bradley Stoke and Chatham to Northam. So if there's no bus route between those two, the only alternative for public transportation is to get the train down to Chatham, switch trains, and then go up to Northam. Which is fine. There's nothing there's nothing wrong with that route, if that's what you want to do. But having a bus route between these two would just be really efficient. And I'm just going to go ahead and pay off a little bit of the loan. Pay off a little bit more of the loan. Pay off a little bit. No, I'm going to add this bus route. So if we come in here, they're going to be coming in here looping down. I'll probably drop them here, and then hopefully they'll loop back out. We got a nice boat. The Schaffshausen. This is actually a really good boat. It's it's fast, it's got good capacity, it's a really good early game boat. Ship, I should say. So when they come in now, if they loop up and around and drop somewhere here, I think that that's a good loop. And I imagine I'll probably need a waypoint here to get them to go the direction that I want. So if we add a new line now from this bus stop up to this one, that's nice. They didn't even need the waypoint to get it to do it the way that I wanted. And how's this going to work? That's fine. They're going up a side street. That's not bad. And this is going to be Northam up to Bradley Stoke. So this is going to be a bus route, Northam to Bradley, and do we have a depot nearby? We do, so I'll get six of those. I'm going to change the color on the line. to this nice blue just so that it's not conflicting as closely with this crude line. It, it wouldn't really matter and you can see they're doing the nice split again just to even out that line and that's going to be a really nice split because it's almost dead in the middle. Pay off a little bit more of the loan. So you can see now we're down to 8.5 so we're making good progress on the loan. Let's check out how our lines are doing. So the Haywards to Wadhurst and the Northam to Bradley. Those are our two brand new bus routes. Those are going to take some time to establish. This Wadhurst food route is just a dog. Um, and it's just not, it's just not making us money. And, and that's fine. It's not traveling far. So it's, it's going to be paid. It's not going to be paid a lot anyway. And then top that off with the, the running expenses of going back and forth. It's just not gonna make us money, but delivering the food is necessary to grow these towns. So like, the town that probably has the most going on right now, Market Bosworth is getting goods and transportation. And you can see it's got plus 90% population growth up to 419 from its target of 221. That's really good. It's, it's growing great. You can see the market, Bosworth to Hornsey bus route is just swapped. So I might add two more buses onto there. And this is actually a good point, a good time to look at emissions. So if we go into our emissions overlay, emissions essentially accounts for everything from noise pollution to actual emission pollution. Um, from the vehicles running and you can see that these towns are suffering 
from a pollution issue. And I'm just gonna go ahead, while we talk about pollution, I'm just gonna pay off some of this loan. The reason for that is pollution is entirely based on the condition of the vehicle. So if we go down to like one of our older bus routes, the, this, uh, let's see, right here, Market to Hornsey, Market Bosworth to Hornsey. The condition of these buses is bad. So their emissions are super high. So if we go into one of these vehicles, and we go to their details, their emissions are bad, or their condition is bad. So their emissions go up by four, from 75 to four for the bad condition. And you can see it's only getting worse, 18%. One way that you can deal with this is you can change the maintenance level on the vehicle. So if you put this at high, it will bottom out the condition at mediocre, which is not great, not terrible, but it increases the running cost by 25%. So if you bump it up to very high, the condition of the vehicle will stay very good or good. I can't remember which. This is a really good thing to do once you start getting a, a good surplus of money and you can afford to spend a bit more on maintenance of vehicles because it will reduce the emissions in the town. So if we go here, luckily Market Bosworth is getting a huge bump from the supply of construction materials, the private transport in the city, so the resident growth, and then the or sorry, the, the private transport in the city, and then also the public transport. So it's getting a huge boost to these. It's getting a crushing negative from the emissions. We're still at 90% growth. So I'm not overly concerned about it right now, 80%. So maybe I should be concerned. But my point being that emissions are something to definitely think about. Later in the game, I won't have a vehicle that goes into a city that doesn't have at least a high maintenance level, if not a very high, just to cut down on those emissions. So like these vehicles on this grain line, I don't care about their emissions because if we go to the emissions overlay, they're not, they're not contributing to the emissions in the city. Maybe barely, barely. So I don't care if they're condition suffers and they produce more emissions as a result. They, they will function the same way. Their speed and capacity will not change. But these vehicles running the food into Wadhurst, I will have set um, at minimum high maintenance and like a, an inner city uh, or a, an intra-city bus that just runs around the city, that's always inside the city limits, that will likely have a very high maintenance level to keep those emissions as low as they can be. I hope that makes sense. I just went on an emissions tangent for quite a while. But anyway, I'm sure that makes some semblance of sense. So now we've got this, this line. Let's see how it's getting going. So Northam to Bradley, we are making money. So we are now making money on all of our lines. You can see this rail line is just taking off and it can't, it just can't even move. It's coming with full loads, not full loads both ways, but full loads up here and then a half load coming back. We could use more vehicles on this line. I'm gonna go ahead and pay back some of that loan, and then think about replacing these vehicles with the Benz trucks. We'll need 291000 We should get that and more when this makes a delivery. Let's see how much we're getting for a full delivery of oil at this point. So 60 oil traveling however far that is. It should be a pretty good chunk of change. I mean, 550000 I will take that any day because it will let me replace these and then even add two more on, which is great. 
That's great. And now if we go in and we actually want to edit. So if you ever want to, you know how to make a new vehicle. You've seen me do it. You go into a depot or you come to your vehicle manager and select the depot and buy a new vehicle. If you want to edit an existing vehicle, click on the line. Click on the vehicles that you want to edit, and then come up here to this little wrench, this edit selected vehicles. And now you can you can edit these vehicles. So if we want to add maybe two more tank cars onto both of these, you just add them here, and then it modifies them to 14. The only thing that you now have to do, if we pause the game real quick. So, and this is purely cosmetic does not change the gameplay at all. Our train and all of the 12 cars that we had previously are colored the line color. The new cars are not. So if we go into these and we repaint them, now they're all colored the same. Purely cosmetic, you do not have to do that. I just think it works for continuity. And we've increased our capacity now up to 70. On these, on these trains. And we'll just keep going ahead and adding capacity until they max out at the length of 240 meters, which is our platform length. We can't exceed platform length, otherwise the train won't be able to load and unload. Which is why when we go in here and we build train station, the default is 160. You can go all the way up to 320, and then you could even make it longer than 320 by configuring platform and adding more platforms down the way. Now we can't do it here because there's obviously a road in the way, but you could definitely do that at some point. And maybe I want to preemptively move this road and add some platforms in and do the same down here so that we can have a longer train. I've found that 240, 240 meters for a platform length and similarly for a train length is a good is a good size platform so if we look here 170 capacity that tells me that we can add maybe four more of these cars 1.6 million maybe three more and then we'll repaint them just again trying to get that capacity up the higher the capacity the more we're going to make on these deliveries and just the better overall this line's going to perform. And you can see that we're really not hurting for money anymore. We're really not. We're getting to the point now where we can comfortably pay down the loan and still have enough money to do the things that we want to do. And it's all stemming from this rail line and also from having really well just established lines. Because a lot of times, you know, you might set up like a bus route and look at it and just think like, this is not making me any money, so I'm gonna scrap this line. It's better to just let the line breathe a little bit and establish itself. And thinking about it, I might wanna put a bus route in right here. The only reason I'm not going to is that I know that I'm gonna blast train line in right here between Bradley Stoke and Bodeman with a station probably here and here. That'll be the that'll be the goal once we get this whole loan paid off. That'll probably be an episode three goal. And you can see we are just having monster numbers coming out of these these pasture lines. If we sort this by I guess we can't just sort by bus. Trams, trains, yeah. I would love to just be able to sort by bus, but I guess we could sort by bus like this. But you can see these are almost all completely maxed out, which means we could put more vehicles on the lines, but I don't want to have too much congestion in these cities. It's not terrible right now. You know, there, there's, no, there's no bus queuing or anything like that. You know, by the time this guy gets here, he should move out. So it's not awful, the, the amount of traffic. 
I just don't think it's necessary to go through and flood the lines with vehicles. Some some queues are healthy. You know, 26 people waiting here for a bus is fine. Now, is it fine when the next bus is all the way down here? This is a pretty long line, so it might benefit from having a few more vehicles. And I'll probably add a few more when these buses clear out and end up down here. I could also do it this way. I could add four more buses here, paint them that green color, and then add them onto this line. That way they're entering from here, because you can see there's only one bus up here right now. So getting some more vehicles on the line at this end would be beneficial. Rather than using this depot, where all of our buses are queued, you can see that they're even... Or I guess these are for multiple bus routes. But they're even starting to bunch up at this station. Which is not the end of the world. But it's certainly... It's certainly nice to try and balance the line as best you can. And these guys are going to bunch up initially, just because they're all going to the same station. But they'll spread out as they progress. And we're almost done with that loan. And I would say once we get that loan paid off, we'll probably wrap up this video. And then we'll go on. And I'll see you again in the third video. So, I'm probably going to wrap it up here. And then, you know, off screen, I'm just going to pay down this loan. We've only got a, a million and a half left. You know, I can pay off half, so we've only got 500,000 left. But I think we've accomplished a lot of what we wanted to do. Get this rail line established. Start to swap out some of these vehicles. Get a few more really good passenger routes established. And I think we're making really good progress to getting some of these cities to grow. And pretty much if we go into any city now, they've got positive growth. The emissions are starting to become a problem. So in the next video, we'll probably start to handle some emissions. And in the next video, we're going to start this pasture line from Chatham through Bradley Stoke up to Bodeman. And at some point, it'll probably carry across to South Hall and then branch off to Colchester and Lowe and up to Tau Law. I think that that's a pretty good goal for the next video, for the next video. And with this delivery right here, we'll probably be able to pay off this loan. And then I'll go ahead and end the video. Look at that. We have no loan remaining. If you look at our charts, our value is now much higher than our uh, bank balance, which is nice. So, in this video, I really just wanted to, you know, build on what we did last time and just get some of these lines established. I think it's been a really good video. Again, if you guys are new to the channel, I would love, you know, a like, a subscribe, a comment. Let me know how I'm doing. And if you like the content, um, please come back for more. I'm having fun making it. And I, again, I hope to get at least one video out, you know, every week. Um, this week, I'll probably get a few more out just because I have a little bit more time off from work. So thank you for being here. Like, comment, subscribe. Have a great day. And I will... I will see you guys later.